Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in this video, we'll be going over the amazing art sketchbook of Howl's Moving Castle, directed by Hayao Miyazaki. This book is based on a novel by Diane Wynne Jones, a British fantasy author who unfortunately passed away in 2011. And I'll be honest, when I first went to Osaka, I saw this book in a kinokuniya. I did see The Boy and the Heron first, and I thought that was cool, but I didn't really think much of Howl's Moving Castle. Now I did watch Ponyo, I did watch Totoro and Spirited Away, but not this one. And just two days ago, I watched this movie and it is unbelievably amazing. It is probably the most creative animated feature I've ever seen. So I was not prepared for how good and breathtaking this movie is. So this book is divided into three different parts. Well, the first part, we have the initial image boards. Like here, we have the Victorian-esque cityscape that Sophie lives in. We have the moving castle, some of the interior over here. Here, we have the world that the castle moves around in. I thought that was really incredible because this is a world where science and magic can coexist. Here, we have Sophie working as a hatter. We see the environment that she lives in. And then we see her walking through the city. She bumps into the guards. And then we have the inciting incident where Hal shows up and saves her. So. This is a great, great overview of, of some of the characters, some of the initial look and feel of this movie. Now in the second part, we get into more character boards, more image boards. Here we have a breakdown of Sophie and how she looks. We have a three quarter view, we have the environment she lives in, what her eyes look like, what her hairstyle looks like. Now according to the art director Noboru Yoshida, they actually went location scouting in a city called Colmar based in France in the Prince Alsace region. And they went location scouting here and they used this place as inspiration. The flowing clouds, the sunlight, the Victorian-esque castle-like rooftops, uh, the light in the atmosphere, all of it was used in this movie as inspiration. And uh, this is the first time they used a European-esque cityscape. And I think they captured the vibe and atmosphere of this city so perfectly. Here we see the Witch of the Waste and her goons. Here we see the character breakdown of Sophie as she is 90 years old. Uh, we see over here the whole dysfunctional family all together in one portrait. Uh, here we see light being used as a way to express the space in this landscape. Here we have a breakdown of the castle, the different parts over here. Here we have Calcifer, the fire demon who has a pact with Howl that he houses the heart of Howl. In exchange of that, Howl is kept and remains alive alive. So here we have Marco, a very, very interesting character. He's like a wizard in training and he learns how to use that magical door that takes him from place to place. Here we have Hal showcasing some of his magical abilities over here. And we can literally see here that Sophie is cleaning up this castle. It's as if she is literally cleaning Hal's personality because he's a textbook hikikomori, a socially unevolved young man. I thought that was really funny that Susan Napier wrote that in Miyazaki's world. But here we have some of the more domestic scenes contrasted by the war like scenes. Here we have some of the designs of the fighter jets and the airplanes that Hal is fighting when he goes out to his nightly sorties and nightly duties to fight this brutality that he's surrounded by. Here we have a really funny scene where Hal freaks out because Sophie switched out his hair dyes in his bathroom. And then here she comes back to nurture him and to tell him to stop being a baby. Here we have a very funny scene where we have Sophie meeting up with the Witch of the Waste and they are competing to get to the top of this castle to meet with Miss Sullivan. And this scene is really funny. I thought they did a fantastic job on this. The voice actors were incredible. Now, Miss Sullivan's character is really dark and shady, and I thought that was also very interesting. Hal returns disguised as a guard. I thought that was really well done. Um, here, she saves Sophie. He puts her on a fighter jet, and she can return back to the castle. And here we have Hal continuing to fight this brutal war and we see that he is turning into a mindless weapon of war that he totally despises and Calcifer warns him of this because he says hey you may not be able to turn back into your human form again and I thought by the way Christian Bale did a great job as Hal I thought that was really funny because he he did the Batman voice when he was the beast like creature I thought that was really funny and really well done really well done uh, over here we have uh, the scene where Sophie is reunited with her mother and over here we see some of the machinery the the night like brutality that's going on all the light is coming from the fire and the bombs that are taking place because of this great war that Hal is fighting and these scenes were so well done there was a real sense of urgency to this because uh, Calcifer needed to stay alive because if Calcifer died, he made a pact with Hal, and then if he died, then Hal would die. So here she meets the younger version of Hal, and I thought this scene was so beautiful that Miyazaki even said that the whole reason he became an animator was to one day make that shooting star scene. And then here the whole castle collapses, and uh, yeah, it seems like the end, but this is where Sophie expresses and shows her love for Hal 
and uh, he is then recovered. She even saves the turnip scarecrow character who has his curse lifted. And then finally we have the castle that is now transformed into this magical garden-like object in the sky. And that really ties to the consistent theme of this movie which is the power of family ties. Because this castle is now transformed and it's beautiful and it is more whole rather than a machine junk-like thing that's just wandering around the wasteland. So really beautifully done movie. There's so many themes and so many aspects of this movie that I love and some parts confuse me but I guess I'll just go back and watch it again. But guys I hope you enjoy this movie. I hope you enjoy this video. Feel free to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.